Do you want to create online courses that stand out? Do you want to do it fast? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to rapidly create dynamic videos for your online courses using animation and the template feature in ScreenFlow 8. Hey, it's Mike with more tips and tutorials to help you create great video for your YouTube channel, your video marketing, and online courses. Thank you so much for being here. You know, I'm a big fan of ScreenFlow the video editing and screen recording software from Telestream. There are so many things I love about ScreenFlow. I really don't have time to go into them in this video. But what I am going to show you are two features in ScreenFlow 8 that will help you create dynamic videos for your online courses and do it really fast. Let's jump in. So here we are in ScreenFlow 8. This is version 8.2.3. And I have this project open, which contains a short video lesson that I recorded right here in ScreenFlow. The first track here on the timeline is me on camera recorded with my webcam. And this track corresponds with this little window here on the canvas. The second track below is a recording of my computer screen, which is full screen on the canvas here. I'll play this a little bit so you can get an idea of what's going on. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about one of the biggest mistakes people make when creating instructional or how-to videos. And that big mistake is bad sound. So this is a typical arrangement of a tutorial or lesson in an online course. You have the computer screen in the background. This would be your PowerPoint slides or keynote slides. And you have your little talking headshot down here in the corner. Now, there's nothing wrong with this arrangement, but we could make it a bit more dynamic and engaging by adding some animation to these elements using video actions here in ScreenFlow. Let me show you. So here's my finished lesson with some added animation to give it some energy. I also added a short opening clip with some background music, a background graphic, you'll see how this works in a moment. And at the end, I added a fade to black just to add a little bit of polish. Let me play some of this so you can see what I did. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about one of the biggest mistakes people make when creating instructional or how-to videos. And that big mistake is bad sound. Okay, I'm going to go down to this second animation down here. For your instructional or how-to videos. First, invest in a good quality. And I'll go to this last animation down here. Videos. Now, in the next lesson, I'll be looking at another big mistake people make when creating instructional or how-to videos, and that is not enough close-up shots. I'll see you in the next lesson. So to create these animations here, I used video actions here in ScreenFlow. Video actions allow you to change the properties of your video clips over time. To use a video action, you first need to select the video clip you want to apply it to. So for example, let's say I'm going to apply it to this webcam shot. So I'll click to select it. Then you place the scrubber or playhead where you want the animation to happen. I'll just put it there. And then to add the actual video action, you go over here to the right side of the interface to the properties panel here and click this first icon that looks like a video clip. And that brings up the video properties panel. And you can see at the top here we have video and beside it we have add action. So we press this button to add a video action to our clip. I'll do that. And you can see down the timeline, I'm just going to zoom in a bit using the equals key on my keyboard and a video action is added to your clip. And it's added at the spot of the scrubber bar and it's highlighted yellow, which means it's ready for editing. Video actions work like keyframes in other applications. The left side of the video action is the starting keyframe and the right side of the video action is the ending keyframe. And then ScreenFlow automatically animates between the starting keyframe and the ending keyframe. I'm going to delete this video action we placed here by just hitting the delete key. I'm going to zoom back out using the minus key. So looking at this first video action here, in my timeline, I'll zoom in again using the equals key. You can see on this video action, on the starting keyframe on the left side of this yellow bar, my webcam shot is set to full screen, it's centered, and the scale is 100%. And you set those properties here 
in the Video Properties panel. You can see scale set to 100%, X and Y position set to zero, and then for the ending keyframe of my video action, I changed those properties. I scaled down my webcam shot and positioned it to the left and cropped in the sides a bit using these crop settings here in the video properties panel. I'll hit the space bar to play this so you can see it again. Videos. And that big mistake is screen flow smoothly animates between the two keyframes. Now you can adjust the speed of the animation by adjusting the length of this bar. The shorter the bar, the faster the animation. The longer the bar, the slower the animation. You can also change how the animation moves from the starting keyframe to the ending keyframe by right clicking or control clicking on the video action, going to curve type and selecting from this list of curve types. I selected ease out for this video action. So you can see when I play this back, video. that the animation that starts video. sharply, then video. gradually slows video. down as it reaches video. the ending keyframe of the video action. Videos. That big Experiment with these curve types to see which one works for your project. I'm gonna zoom back out of the timeline again because I wanna point out something else in this timeline and it's something that will save you a ton of time when you're animating with video actions. And that's these things way over here. I'm gonna zoom in to get a better look. They look like video actions, but they're a darker purple. That's because these are snapback actions. A snapback action changes the settings of your clip back to what they were before the previous action took place. This will make more sense if I show you. I'll select this snapback action and delete it. I'm going to zoom back out of the timeline. And let's go back to this first animation at the beginning here, where I slide into this side by side arrangement with my screen recording. I'll go to the second animation here, where I slide completely off of the screen. Instructional or how to videos. So let's say I want to go back to that side-by-side -side arrangement with me on screen. Well, I could animate the move manually again, or I could use a snapback action to animate it instantly. So I'll place the scrubber at the point where I want that snapback action to happen. I'll just zoom into the timeline here so you can get a better look. So here's where I want to bring my webcam shot back on for that side-by-side -side arrangement. So making sure my webcam clip is selected, I'll go up to the top menu and under actions, I'll go down to add snapback action. Now, because I'm using video actions on my clips, I need to select video from this menu. And you see a snapback action is placed on the timeline at the location of the scrubber. I'll just adjust this length so it matches the snapback action in the other track below. So if I play this now, now in the next lesson, we see my webcam shot automatically animates back to that side-by-side -side arrangement before the previous video action. Now in the next, snapback actions are very handy, but they only work if you have an action to snap back to. So we have this nice dynamic video lesson made for our online course. Now it took me about 10 to 15 minutes total to add those animations, not a long time. But what if you wanted to add those animations to all of your lessons? What if your online course is made up of 30, 40, 50 video lessons? Well, then you're looking at hours upon hours of extra work just to add those simple animations, but not with ScreenFlow 8. We can cut down on our animation and editing time drastically by creating a template for our video lesson. With a template, we only have to create these animations and add these other elements once and then use them over and over again in subsequent videos that we create from the template. Tweaking the elements in each video lesson as needed. Creating a lesson template takes four steps. The first step is to create a new project file. You need to do this to make this all work. So I'll go up to File, New, and select New Document. 
Now I want this new project to match my finished lesson project file, so I'll select the 1080p preset and create the document. The next step is to go back to the project with my finished lesson and select all of the media and copy and paste it into the new project file I just created. The third step is to replace the media clips in this new project file with template placeholder clips. I'll start with my webcam shot here. So I'll go up to Insert, Template Placeholder Clip, and I get this dialogue with three choices and this explanation text. Now because I'm replacing my webcam clip, which is a camera recording, I'm going to select the camera and microphone placeholder clip. And I get this clip placed in the timeline labeled placeholder. I'm going to adjust this placeholder clip to match my webcam clip. Then I'm going to copy all of the video actions on my webcam clip and paste them onto this new camera and microphone placeholder clip. Then I'll delete this webcam media here, then replace it with the camera and microphone placeholder clip. Now I'll create a placeholder for my screen recording clip. So back up to insert, template placeholder clip, and from the choices I'm going to select screen recording and computer audio. and a new placeholder clip drops onto the timeline. I'll position it above my screen recording clip. And like I did with the webcam clip, I'll copy all of the video actions from the screen recording clip and paste them onto the screen recording placeholder clip. Then I'll delete the screen recording media and replace it with the screen recording placeholder clip. I'll leave these other elements like the opening, the music, and the fade to black as is because I want to use them in the videos I create from this template. Alright, we've created our video lesson template with all of the elements and animation from the original project. Step four is to save this whole thing as a template. So I'll go up to File, Save as Template. And I get this dialog that explains how a template file works. Basically, when you create a new recording from a template, all of the placeholder clips in the template will be replaced with the corresponding new media that you record. So now you just enter a name for your template and save it. And you can see that our template file has been created. And it's a document just like any other document in ScreenFlow. So you can edit it. First, I'm just going to close this template file. And then I'm going to create a new recording. So I'll go up to File, New, and select New from Template. And I get this screen that shows all of my template files. Now if I want to edit a template, I select it, and then select this little pencil icon down here. But I don't need to do that. So I'll select our demo lesson template here, and then set up my new recording. And now you can configure your recording just like any other recording in ScreenFlow. But make sure that your recording settings match 
the settings of the original lesson file, the one you use to create the template, or else when you make your new recording, you might have some issues with positioning and scale. So in my case, my original recording was 1080p. So I just make sure that all of my settings here, my screen, my webcam are set to 1080p. So when you're ready to record, you just hit the big red button. Okay, I'm back. I figured I'd spare you having to watch me record the demo video for this, but here is the demo video I just recorded using that template we created. I'll play a bit of it. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about another big mistake. People and as you can see, the camera and microphone template placeholder clip has been replaced with my new webcam recording. And likewise, the screen recording template placeholder has been replaced with the new screen recording that I did. Then all I had to do was take the video actions and slide them to where I needed the animations to happen in my lesson. And if I need more animations, I can just simply copy and paste these video actions and place them in other spots in my lesson. ScreenFlow 8 will save you tons of time when creating your online courses. But to create a truly great online course, you need to develop great content. For help with that, check out these other videos on my channel. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell icon so that you're notified as soon as I post my next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.